This video is going to cover the operational daily bathing load for a swimming pool. This is different from the instantaneous bathing load. Uh, we've covered that in another video which I'll link to and I'll also put a link in the description to that video. The instantaneous bathing load gives you a maximum bathing load in terms of the number of people permitted in the pool at any one moment in time. Uh, whereas the daily bathing load is different, what that what that refers to is is a limit, a cap, on the amount of people to be using a pool over the course of the entire day, i.e., an entire twenty four hour period. Um, and it's important to work that one out because that's actually more relevant to pool plant operations um, because there's a certain limit that any system will be able to. In terms of pollution, there's a certain limit that any pool plant system will be able to cope with. And if you push it beyond that, the, the system is going to start to struggle to cope. So what, what I tend to find is, is that in a lot of documentation that, uh, that sites have to do with their pools, in the NOP, the Normal Operating Procedures, they may well have a bather load uh, recorded to deal with the instantaneous bather loading but they often fail to work out and record their operational daily bathing load and what this has led to uh, in some sites is they end up overloading the pool it usually happens it's more common in my experience in school pools where you might have a, a fairly small pool uh, and associated plant to service the needs of the pool, uh, of the school and that might have been uh, designed and built a number of years ago where at that point in time the um, the pool was intended to service just the needs of the school and then what happens is um, as time goes on, the school decides that they want to, for example, maximise the, the revenue from the swimming pool um, by expanding the usage of it to not just school use, but community use as well. So it would remain open after the school day and be used by the local community in the evenings and on weekends, and they'd... Um, maybe start a learn to swim scheme which again will increase the usage hiring the pool out to outside groups which again increases the usage uh, running birthday parties on the weekends which again increases the usage and it can and, and this often goes on without a corresponding upgrade of the pool plant system so the pumps the filters the heating um, the turnover time was all geared around what the original design intent was and that was purely just to service the needs of the school. So they can end up um, sometimes uh, doubling, uh, trebling and even sometimes quadrupling the design bathing load for the, for the pool. So the way to work out the design, uh, the operational bathing load is to take the instantaneous bathing load that we worked out uh, in another video that's the starting point and you basically take um, there's a formula that um, uh, you can use to work out an appropriate daily bathing load you take the instantaneous bathing load and you take 25 to 20 uh, 25 to 50 percent of that instantaneous bathing load and multiply by 12. so in the example um, I'll use the same figure that we got from the instantaneous bathing load in the other video. When we worked that out, we got to a instantaneous bathing load of 110. So let's do 50% of 110, um, and then multiply uh, multiply that by by 12. Um, so we'd end up with a um, a, day, a daily bathing load of 660. 
So that's 110 divided by 2 uh, multiplied by 12. That would give 660 bathers per day. But as I said, it's 25 to 50 percent. So it's a range that you use. So we've just worked it out on 50 percent, gave, gave us 660. So if you worked it out based on 25 percent, we'd be 330. So the range, the, the daily bathing load range for this particular type of pool with an instantaneous bathing load of 110 people would be 330 to 660 swimmers per day. And somewhere in that range would be uh, the maximum amount of people that that pool could reasonably be expected to cope with on a on a day-to-day -day basis and still provide water that is clean, safe and hygienic. So it would really be up to the management to decide where in that range would be an appropriate, appropriate place to put that limit. If it's um, an old um, plant room it might be wise to keep the the, the maximum bathing load to the to the lower end of that range. If it's a fairly modern plant room, if management have got confidence in the plant room's ability uh, to cope, then maybe the um, bathing load could get pushed up to the to the top end of that range. Wouldn't really be a good idea to go beyond it though. That's if you go beyond that uh, maximum daily bathing um, load, then that's when you're going to start to see a deterioration in, in, in water quality and get that recorded in the uh, NOP so that it's there in black and white in the pool's documentation which will hopefully prevent the site from then ever going beyond that level of usage on a day-to-day -day basis because it's very difficult especially for these sites that are already far in excess of what their proper uh, daily bathing load should be. Once they've surpassed it and they've been enjoying that extra revenue, it's very difficult to backpedal that then and start cutting the usage because you're going to be cutting the revenue. And that puts the operators of the facility in a very difficult position because now they're sort of forced to operate it knowing that, that they are not in uh, compliance with the the industry industry standard and so management need to sort out what that daily bathing load is going to be somewhere in that range of 25 to 50 percent times 12 of the instantaneous bathing load record it uh, in the NOP and then make sure that that then becomes um, something to prevent the pool from ever finding itself in a position where there's simply too much pollution going into that pool water, um, meaning that the pool plant system is not able to cope.